Good morning, Tuskegee. I'm going to interview my son, Rashid, this morning as my first person on. Uh, and I'm Betty Hunter Swanson, a homegirl. I went to Washington Public School my first seven years in school, then to Tuskegee Institute High School, then to Tuskegee Institute, City College of New York, and a few other schools. I married Jack Swanson and became the mother of five boys and two girls. This is my second youngest son, Rashid Swanson. Rashid, what year did you finish high school? Year 2000. You know that. Old people. How long were you in the U.S. Navy? Four and a half years. And what did you do there? I was an information system technician. Tell us about what that is. I pretty much controlled all the information going in and out of every U.S. Navy ship. Okay. Okay. When you returned from the Navy, what did you do? Tell us about that. Uh, after I got out of the Navy, I came back home, went to school online, graduated with a computer programming degree. And then, uh, in between that, um, started a business with my partner Patrick, and uh, we now run the Tuskegee Public Access TV station. How long have you been get working on getting the station back into Tuskegee? Um, hands on for about a year, but on and off for about two and a half years um, through working through two different administrations with the city um, and charter communications. Exactly what part did you play in that? Uh, I had a pretty big role, um, basically getting together all the equipment and content that was needed to run the station. Meaning shows, videos, and the equipment given us by charter, or loaned to us by charter, and also the equipment that we bought ourselves. What part do you play now in keeping the station on the air? I am actually the chief executive officer um, at the station, which means pretty much that I take care of all of the technical aspects of it. I'm sorry, the chief engineer. Okay. I said executive. That's, that's what I was getting hung up on. But um, yeah, so I take care of all of the technical aspects of it from the websites to the um, uploading of the videos to the internet and um, producing some videos myself and um, recording stuff and basically it's a it's a full-time job um, of pretty much just doing what needs to be done to keep everything going smoothly. When you say full-time you're talking about eight hours or you're talking about 24 hours? 24 hours a day. Um, we're pretty much on call all the time because as long as the station is running something, if it goes down, we got to go up there, bring it back up, or even if we're up there while it's having trouble, we got to you know, pretty much maintain it all day, all night. Um, how much support have you gotten from the city, the people in the city, the mayor, the city council? Uh, the citizens have been great. Um, everybody pretty much loves it. Um, they respond very positively to it. They love that it's back. They love the shows on it. If anything, most of their criticisms are basically criticisms of charter because the station has technical difficulties that we have to call them. And sometimes it runs a little fuzzy. Sometimes it sounds a little low. And most of that stuff is um, on charter's end that they have to tweak and um, if people are still having those issues they do need to let us know because we haven't done um, 
like on the ground testing. We have not gone from house to house to know who's getting good signal, who's getting bad signal. So people are still having those problems. They need to, they need to still contact us. But other than that, um, as far as the city is concerned, they have done what. Um, a pretty good job of supporting us at this point but I think the main thing is they don't understand that we need um, more of a organizational type of thing going on we don't need to be the only two people and we don't need to be the only depending on us we need um, support from all the organizations in town basically the university the board of education um, and also, even more from the, from the citizens, we need more content submitted to basically drive our message home that we are here to stay and we should keep fresh content coming. How long has the station been off the air before returning at this time? Uh, the station went off the air in 2007 um, with the untimely demise of Jimmy Johnson, who was running at the time. and. Um, Pretty much stayed dark until March 19th of this year when we brought it back online. Why is it important to continue the station? What needs to happen to produce a better station? I think you just covered some of that stuff, though, by saying the citizens need to give content and they need, um, and they're still showing really good support and all of that. What was the know. first part of that question? Why is it, a, why is it important to continue the station? Well, public access in general was created by the federal government to give each and every individual community uh, a form of freedom of speech, to voice their opinion to the public, uh, whether it's complaints or whether it's praise. Um, people need to be able to express their opinions, and um, the federal government also created funding, which is how we get funded through franchise feed through the cable company. Um, and most public access stations get about 20% of that funding. I'm not sure what percentage we get um, of our franchise fee, but that's what you need to remain competitive to be able to get the facilities and the equipment and the manpower that you need to continue running it properly. I missed some of that. I'm so slow. I'll go back. Okay, go um, back. Basically, um... We need support from the people. I don't think I put that in there, but we need support from the people, and we need um, funding, and we need programming, and a way for people to get their programming to to other people, to the to the public. Basically, it's hard to get content on a commercial channel like, let's say, WSFA. Mm -hmm. We we don't have, we're probably never gonna get any programming on there. Mm -hmm. So. The federal government has a way for each and every individual community to voice their opinion and get their programs to their people through public access. And it's funded by the federal government through the um, licensing company, which is, in our case, is Charter. Mm -hmm. Charter pays us a franchising fee every year, um, which is the same franchise fee that the citizens pay um, on their bills. And all that's tabulated up at the end of the year and given back to the city. And most uh, public access channels get about 20% of that money to operate their public access. Uh, and that's something else that's stipulated by the federal government that that's what that fee is used for. And um, so it's different ways. There's other ways also of funding a station. Um, you got um, grants and... Um, donations can also fund it but um it's it's an important part of the community because um you know each community needs to have their own voice and a way to get that voice out to the people um we do stuff like the city council meeting which keeps people abreast of what's going on in the government we do all of the big city events like the parades and the festivals and the um Pretty much all the stuff that goes on in the square, we try to broadcast it, and the churches, and the, it's just a way for the community to keep their 
people informed of all the stuff that's going on because nobody can be everywhere all at once. Well, let's be clearer about the difference between a commercial station and a public access station because I think this is a, would be a problem because I imagine most people are expecting to hear um, all of the, the, the some modern shows on the TV station and different stuff like that, but that will not happen because it is a public access station so the public can have access to general information and freedom of speech, right? Right, I mean, um, generally the reason why a public access station could never compete with the commercial station is, is just to be blunt about it, it's because of the money. Most commercial stations bring in millions if not billions of dollars a year in ad revenue and the ad revenue pays for the production of the shows. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you watch a show like, let's say, Modern Family, mm -hmm. um, during that Modern Family show, you're going to see tip commercials in between those shows for companies like Ford and Chevrolet and Dove and these major multi-billion dollar corporations pay a certain amount of money just for a second of ad time in between that, those those shows because they know people are watching these shows. Mm -hmm. So you're marketing your products through this show basically. Mm -hmm. And then there's all kind of other deals they even have going on where every car in certain shows is sponsored by Ford or Chevrolet or uh, Toyota or whatever. So in other words, we can't do any of that because that's not what our station is about. The whole purpose of our station is because our local community cannot compete on that level because we don't have those kind of that kind of millions and billions of dollars to generate ad revenue. We could generate ad revenue and we could start our own commercial station and try to see how that would compete, you know, with the business that we have here and, 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 and that could be a possible thing, but public access is completely different because it's a way of the government providing you airways that are free that you don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to pay for is the services that people give to the station. Uh, which mean in the videos they submit, um, the time they donate, um, and the equipment that we need to run it, and stuff like that, and somebody to run it, to actually be in charge of it, because it's not going to run itself. So in other words, commercial stations have every advantage when it comes to operating. The only advantage that we have is that the government guarantees that we should have a slot with our provider, uh, which is Charter. Um, and so, in other words, we get we, we technically get free airways guaranteed because we're a city. Um, and each city, like I said, gets that. But um, it's, it's just, it's, it's oranges and apples, quite frankly. Public access stations are nothing like commercial stations. Because if we could put commercials on there, um, we would be making a whole lot more money and um, we wouldn't have to go through the city either. Um, but the city is the person that has to be in charge of a public access channel. So where can citizens write, call, or be in touch to in order to inform or to help or get their information out because it seems to me that this is a good avenue for us to get our public information, whatever we want to do, out and to help Tuskegee grow and all of that, you know. Well, it's, uh, they can contact us at this point. Um, the email is rosterman5353 at hotmail.com for any suggestions, any complaints, any contributions. Um, we get contributions from citizens who want to put messages out, and you'll see them on the station, uh, announcements and things of that nature. Um, and, um, I mean, it's, it's a good thing, like you said, to get the word out. We've got great feedback from people who put their message out, of people seeing their stuff on the station and responding to it. So it's, it is a good avenue for people to use. Well, Rashid, I've seen you be so consistent, and you persevered. And an excellent station has come about for all that, all of the the, the 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 negatives, you know, and I think that's really great. I really uh, 
want the station to be successful, and I hope everybody does, and I'm sure everybody does. We all hate it, hoping that Tuskegee can come forward and rise, you know, rise back to the standard and better than it used to be, you know. Um, and consequently, um, I think you and Patrick have done an excellent job, you know, and especially of getting the station here. The main thing, it got here. And so now we're here and we have the, the avenue to go forward and do all the things that we want to do in Tuskegee. And all of us want new stores and we've got some new ones lately. And we're just doing great on the rise, you know, really, we are. Um, I, I guess that's all for today because I, the main thing I wanted to do today was to, to give the, the praise to, to those people who have brought the station here and got it here and kept it here for this time. You know, that, that's you and Patrick, hopefully. And of course, the mayor and the city and the city manager has helped you a lot, is from what I understand, and we appreciate their help very much. You know, mm -hmm. city council as well, and the city council as well. Yes. I think that's the wrap, Freshie. I'm Betty Hunter Swanson, an elder, a native of Tuskegee, Alabama, Macon County girl. I went, to, I went to Washington Public High School, Tuskegee Institute High School, and the Tuskegee Institute College for a while. I went to Secretary of School in New York to Switchboard Training School in New York, to City College of New York. And I stayed and worked in New York City for 10 years, for 10 years. In this show, I would like to show, help develop a better understanding of what happens when elders actually want to do, but actually I want to do it worldwide, not just in Tuskegee, but I'd like to have more, do what, something to develop, just a little start to develop respect for elders, especially African American elders after all we've been through. And one of the things I'm trying to do too and while I'm doing that is report some good news, you know, so we can have a little inspiration in our lives too. Um, I have a few things of good news now that I'm talking about a young black boy age 10 carrying a sign saying free hugs. A police officer wanted to know if he could get a hug and he told, gave him one. A Toys R Us store in Massachusetts came in um, uh, uh, towards a rest resto in Bellington, Massachusetts, a uh, lady came in and paid for all of the layaway gifts, totaled twenty thousand dollars. A woman, Linda, walked in the store, the same store, with nine dollars, and she also paid for all her toys for her two boys. In Missouri, a rich businessman gave one hundred thousand dollars to the sheriff's department to give to increase the image of the sheriff's. And what the sheriffs did was they stopped cars that had dents in them and bundle on them and gave people a thousand dollars. And the joy that they showed was great concerning it. And this is what he did trying to give them more joy. Okay, I think that's all. That's all of the good news today, I believe. But those are such good things and we can all do these things every day if we will. To just try to do, do good things and not getting back to the elders. Um, I was just talking to a young man who, who was talking about the fact that the elders, uh, our children, uh, need to understand that our older ch adult children, uh, our elders need to understand that they are um, still their children, but they're their son or their, and their daughters, and they're not children and not treat them with disrespect either. And if we're treating as elders, as we treat our children with more respect, perhaps they will treat us with more respect. That's one of the things. But another thing, the whole society needs to understand that elders are to be not only respected because of their age, but they should be respected because of what they know 
and what they've been through and how they can prevent so many things that young people are going through by listening to the elders. And in fact, in a society or in a city or a town or a country, no country, no society, no town is going to be successful without listening to the elders. Because the elders have been through whatever is happening now. And even if they haven't been through exactly the same thing, they've been through enough to understand so many more things than young people understand. And the only way things are going to be successful, that's if the mayor, the city council people, and everyone listen to the elders, and not just from their perspective as, as elders themselves in many cases, but the perspective of the elders in general. Um, I really would imply, I would like to express also that I would like for elders to, to write me their opinions, you know. Um, my address is 1610 Hunter Street, Tuskegee, Alabama, 36083. And I'd like to have, uh, have them express in whatever way they can or want to, uh, to come with me on the show and express how they feel about certain different things that's happening in the society, different things that's happening in Tuskegee especially. As Tuskegeeans, we need to be more involved. And in fact, the general Tuskegee people, the common people, who are not heard in our society because in our in our city because we have so many educated people and that's good. I'm glad that they're educated, but we still need the perspectives of the elders who are who've been through the roughest parts of our society and who understand what it is to 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 go to 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 to, to what it is to who understand what it is to actually have lived this life in America on the bottom and know that this, that's why it's so important that we continue to strive and look forward to and do all we can to get, educate ourselves and not just education in school but educate ourselves by becoming more aware of other people around us treating each other the way that we should be treated, treating each other the way we want to be treated and just doing all of the good things that we need to do for each other. And if we do that, Allah will grow us and He will make us, it will, it will be, if we do the things that we are doing, and as I said, even about the, the good deeds and the good, good news, if those kinds of things are done for the glory of Allah and for His pleasure, He will continue to make us grow and we'll be successful and happy in all that we do. And our town will grow, our state will grow, our cities will grow, our country will grow. And that way we will try to understand each other. Once we start understanding each other on a small level, we will start more to understand each other on the bigger levels. And we'll be able to understand other people in other countries and understand what they're doing and what they're going through and how to help them do better, if not only by example. So as I said, I, I, I really would like for people to express to me, if they will, what it is they would like to, uh, what, what it is they could do toward helping to get more respect for the elders <clears throat> and having more respect and having, doing more things to involve the elders in our community so that it can grow, you know. Thank you so much.